Hey there. This is Eric, taking a look at the new installer for Anaconda in Fedora. So a few days ago on the Fedora magazine, they posted that they were going to um, have a new Anaconda installer and they were looking for feedback. So I decided that I would take a look at the new installer, give them some feedback, but I decided why not document things while I'm, while I'm working on it. So to start off, uh, I'm gonna load up the current installer, Fedora 37, just to refresh my memory, because it's been a little bit since I've installed Fedora from scratch, and uh, do a compare and contrast between the two. Now, um, this is starting up first with a um, live CD. Uh, so it's gonna boot into uh, Fedora with the KDE Plasma spin. But uh, once we start the installer, it should be the Anaconda installer, and then we can do a compare and contrast. I'm going to pause until things load up so you don't have to sit here and watch this go. All right, the UI came up and I expanded it out to be uh, 1080. Um, I think maybe because I'm in um, the vert uh, manager screen versus uh, remote viewer, it doesn't automatically pick up the um, change in the uh, in the resolution. And then I went ahead and la launched the installer. All right, so here we start off. We pick our language. Starts off with English, and we have a whole bunch of different types of English. We'll stick with US. That's the one I want. Not that I think it matters with installation. I doubt there's anything that different between British English and United States English. All right, so we have this screen here, which Fedora's had for, I don't know, at least five years, if not a decade. And um, essentially, instead of going from step by step, they kind of say, here's all the steps you have to do, and you go and come back to the screen. Um, people have complained about it a lot. Um, once I got used to it, I was fine with it, but I can see how it's not necessarily the most inviting thing for new users. So we'll go to system. All right, so here, here's your standard disk, and then you can either do an automatic um, partitioning. You can do custom partitioning. Um, I've never done this advanced custom thing before. You can do an encryption. So most of the time, especially if it's an install on a virtual machine, I just leave it like this. So you just have to come in here, confirm, and then hit done. And again, that, I can see how that is something that can be confusing for people if they don't want to make any changes, but they have to go in there. And then these don't have a, a red uh, line on them, but you could go in and change the time zone or change the host name, um, you know, local live, sure, whatever. Um, I'm not going to keep this installation around so it doesn't matter. The root account is disabled, so you can re-enable it or you can just do everything through sudo. We'll leave it as disabled, It's that's fine. Uh, and then we'll go to here and create our user. Um, so I'll just do test user and uh, I think I have to give it a decent password or it won't take it. Um, let's see. Let's just do Fedora test. All right, so we go out of here. Okay, so what was a little tricky before is that even though I had gone to the root account thing until I created a user that was still like, hey, I don't know. So it's not exactly telling anything to the user. Now I can't select the packages I want. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that would be different on the workstation install, but for sure here, that's it, I'm done. So now I hit begin installation and it just goes and starts putting, um, you know, putting packages on disk. So there's no um, chance to say, I want this or that, or I want Fedora or not. Um, I think the server one usually has a lot more customization. And uh, I don't know if you missed that before, but you know, it's uh, using ButterFS as the, um, the file partitioning versus um, XFS or ext4. I think that's been in the default in Fedora for about a year or two years now. Uh, I've been using ButterFS for at least five, if not six or seven years without any issues. It's not perfect, but as long as you're not doing um, the equivalent of RAID 5, you're fine. So that's gonna do its installation. That that's, doesn't matter because 
we don't care. We just wanted to test it against um, the new installer. Um, so I'm going to pause and load up the new installer. Okay, so this went straight into the installer, not not a live disk, but that's okay. They're just trying to test the installer. Um, so we start off with choosing a language, uh, just like before, only this time we don't have English and then all the types of English. We kind of just have um, English, uh, two different types on top, along with um, some kind of either Arabic or um, other Semitic script. Uh, it's looks like they messed up on the parentheses unless that's how it works in that language uh, I, and it must be in Unicode alphabetically on top it's it's kind of interesting so if you want some kind of different English this is a suboptimal um, installer compared to before however I bet if I type English up here you get all the Englishes so not the end of the world so I'll pick United States and we'll go to next all right so now you know, this UI reminds me a lot of the cockpit UI. Um, so we've got the disc here. Um, let's see, learn more about your storage options. Um, I'm not sure here what I can do though. So it, it <coughs> looks like it just determines everything for you, which you know, if you're just doing a standard install, you know what you want, or you don't necessarily want home to be in its own partition or disk, it's fine. But, uh, I mean, you know, I, I imagine it's going to work for most users, but, um, you know, Linux users aren't most users most of the time. If we go to next. All right, so it looks like there's definitely no partition option. It just says, hey, we're going to do a local standard disk. There it is. You've got 21 gigs total. It tells you to back up your disks. And then I've got erase disk and install. So again, no ability to choose my packages. Um, but again, you know, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe for workstation, they're like, hey, what we've chosen is what we've chosen. And later, you can decide you want more or less or whatever. So I hit erase disk and install. Uh, interestingly, I did not get an option to um, to choose my time zone or even to set my username or user password or if I want the root user. Um, I do like this here. It, it's kind of a more uh, slick interface to let you know what's going on versus having to read the little black text on the bottom here. It's like, okay, these are the concrete steps involved in installation and here we go from one to the next to the next um let's see when we get to system configuration if it asks me about um usernames or passwords or anything when we get to that point uh, i'm going to uh pause and come back once it gets to that step okay so it's moved on to system configuration and it looks like that's not what i thought it was uh, it says it's installing the bootloader, stuff like that. So, so far it hasn't asked me for a username or password or anything like that. Um, again, um, I'll pause until it moves on to finalization, and then we'll see when it takes us to the desktop. All right, it's moved on to finalization. It's generating the init RAM FS, which is part of the boot startup. So far it hasn't asked me for anything about user accounts or anything like that. Uh, while this is doing its thing, I wanted to um, read from the feedback I was providing. Um, so uh, I mentioned that I think that the user should be able to partition their disks or um, set disk encryption. Um, both of those are things that are hard to adjust later uh, as compared to the fact that they're not allowing you to create a user right now or set the host name right now. Those things are way less important. You can do that easily from the um, UI uh, once it's installed. But once your partitions are set, your partitions are set. You can't really change that later. And the same go well. And the same goes with um, kind of your your um, encryption, right? You, either your disk needs to be encrypted or not. Uh, I think I think that's one of those things where you can't really do it afterwards. 
Interesting that this stayed up uh, even once we moved past the screen. I just realized that. Um, all right, so I will come back when this part is done. Oh, I did want to point out that um, I did note in my feedback that we're missing uh, time zone selection as well. Uh, but that's something that can easily be done later uh, from GNOME or KDE or whatever desktop you're installing. So that's not the end of the world that it's not there. Um, it, it all depends on what they're trying to do. Do they want this install to um, to be the quickest way to the desktop possible? So the user can just get going and they'll set that stuff as it comes up? Or do they want it to be the most comprehensive and they're just adding features as they go? All right, the entire process finished. I didn't have any more input I had to provide. Now it's asking me to reboot, I'll go ahead and reboot. And um, unlike with the uh, the last one that I was trying out, we'll let it get all the way to the end because we didn't set a user or anything um, before. We wanna see what happens now when we boot into uh, Workstation, which is uh, GNOME. That's the default for Fedora. All right, so here we are. Things have loaded up or they're in the process of loading up. All right, welcome to Fedora 37. I'm gonna have you up and running in no time. All right, so location services. You know, I'm just gonna, this is, I'm gonna delete this right afterwards. So I'm just gonna leave these on, that's fine. Uh, enable the third party repos. Let's see what that does. Okay. It just does it. So now we've got uh, RPM fusion and maybe some other stuff. All right, I'm not gonna do those. And now we've got time for our accounts. So enterprise login, I'm assuming that means using, um, shoot, what's the uh, active directory or something like that, right? But we're not gonna do that, we're gonna do test user. Um, what happens if I click this? Oh, these are just other options based on the name. We can pick a picture, and my password. All right, it lets me pick a non-strong one. It says we're all done. They hope we love it. Okay, so I was able to put my username. Was not able to select the um, time zone yet uh, or change anything about the host name or anything with networking. All right. We'll just do a quick yes, just to see what it looks like. Maybe it tells you something about the network or something. Start the door, yep. Here we go. All right, super key. There we go. Things are a little laggy because of the VM. Just type to search, type in the overview. Yeah, we, we were there. Workspaces, yep. Up and down for overview. I don't have a touchpad. This is not a laptop. That's it, have a nice day. All right, so nothing about the networking. You can come here and go to, no, here? Interesting. You see the network thing here, but nothing. Oh, here we go, wired. Silly me. All right, so wired settings. And here's where we would set things up. All right, so that's it. Looks like, it looks a lot prettier. I like that it's going step by step rather than having you try to figure out like, hey, what's red? What do I still need to do? So that's a great improvement. Um, not a fan of the fact that you can't partition, not a fan of the fact that you can't encrypt. Everything else you can set up later. Like I bet, let's see in here, uh, time zone. There we go, date and time. And here we can uh, change our time zone, all that type of stuff. So, all right, looks like they're making progress. Uh, we'll see which direction they go. It's all gonna depend on what it is they're trying to get out of their installer. Um, thanks for watching. You've seen a bit of what could be coming in the future for Fedora. I'll see you next time. Bye.